But hey, let's jump right into this Mavericks talk. And if you want to talk about draft, let's open that up because I've been interested on, on some players because we've been seeing free agents, this and that. But I think we got to get some influx of some young players back in there. So talk to, let's, talk to me about this draft, DDP. Yeah, absolutely, man. So first of all, for anyone who hasn't seen it yet, Annie and Duca did a great breakdown on the Dallas Prospect YouTube channel. Uh, like a 45 minute breakdown, like four tiers, like insanely well researched, um, had names that I certainly knew nothing about. And, you know, any, any is way more the draft intensive guy than I am. Like the, the people that I'm aware of is names I had heard mention of and read a little bit about here and there, but he, he was like, no, 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 you really need to look at this guy. And I was like, okay, okay. I'll look. And then I looked and I was like, I agree. <laughs> so. <laughs> A lot, a lot of stuff like that. But um, yeah, there are three names in particular that stood out to me that I think are certainly obtainable. It depends. Like they're varying degrees, obviously. He, he had a couple names um, that aren't on this list, but they, those guys are like, it would take a tremendous stroke of luck for them to fall to you at 26 where Dallas picks. So with that being the case, I, I wanted to stay more in the ballpark of what's more likely. And so three names that interested me Every one of these guys I'm looking at is a guard or a forward. Like, I know we talk about needing a big. There are bigs on his list and that are of interest to me, but there wasn't really anyone good enough as a center likely to be there in that position that I was like, yeah, I, 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 I kind of have the same philosophy as if it's the NFL draft. I like to say, like, let's look at it from best player available, not going from a preset list, you know, like get the talent there more than worrying about like, well, we are, we're a little thin here. So we'll take this guy. That's not as good, but he fills this need, get the best player you can. So mm -hmm. first guy I'm looking at here is uh, guard Dalen Terry. He's a six, seven guard out of Arizona. I like bigger guards for sure. He's got a six ten wingspan. I love that in the guard. Um, he's a three and D player, kind of like a Dorian Finney Smith, except he actually brings a little bit of uh, playmaking ability as well. And that's something that Dodo kind of hinted at a little bit this year, but really has just never been a part of his game, obviously. So getting another guy that can make plays a little bit, put the ball on the deck and make stuff happen while defending and being a very respectable three and D guy. I like that. I like that. I don't think you can have too many of those guys. So that's, that's the first one. And I think he is very obtainable in that range. I, th I think there's a good chance now I, I think any said in his video, there have been mock drafts showing him as high as 17, but more often than not, he's in that 24 to 28 range from what I was seeing. So I think he's going to have a good chance of being there. So that's one to consider. Okay. This guy you might know about a little bit more just because of proximity. Uh, EJ Liddell, six, seven, forward out of Ohio state. Oh yeah. Yep. Uh, very, as any put it, Draymond esque. He like says, him. Yeah, he says he's kind of your prototypical small ball center, which, again, if we're going to look at going a, a little bit unconventional here, hey, well, we do small ball about as well as anybody this side of Golden State, so mm -hmm. maybe there's some value there. Uh, he says he has great defensive versatility, which is why he can play um, your small ball center. He can switch anywhere from the two through five, basically. Uh, and he says he has a high basketball IQ, his shooting touch, though, is better than Draymond. Draymond used to be able to shoot a little bit, but he has not been able to really hit the broad side of a barn in like five, six years, it seems like. And so you don't have to worry about that. But what's what really stood out is he is nails from the corner three. And that is like the bread and butter of Dallas's offense, especially in that playoff run. So if you're able to add a guy like that, a small ball center with a great versatility and you know, has a high basketball IQ and can knock down corner threes, which this offense will generate a lot of. That's a really good promising fit. I like that a lot. And I think, uh, I think he's got a, a shot at being there. The, the most intriguing name, I think that, um, and I seen this guy's name floated out there, several different people on Mavs Twitter talking about him. And I see it for sure. I think of these three, he's, maybe I, I think he would be possibly the biggest addition to the team out of the three names here. If you could get him, uh, that is Wendell Moore jr. He's six, six wing from Duke. He's solid at all three levels of scoring a good defender. He can make plays. The thing about him is like, he's not spectacular at any one thing, but he's good 
basically across the board. Like he is a solid player. He might be a bench player, potentially your first year, but he'll be an impact bench player that first year. And you're talking about a guy who maybe year two, year three can be like a quality starter for you as well. So like you bring in a guy like that who can impact defensively, offensively score at all three levels. And the worst thing you can say is like, well, he's not spectacular in any particular place, but he's, he's really good everywhere. It's like, Okay. Yeah. Problem. What's the problem? Like he, we're not asking him to come in and reinvent the wheel. We're picking at pick 26. You've already got Luca. You're going to be keeping Jalen. You're, you're fine with getting a guy that can be just balanced and, you know, bring in that extra little something, something. So I think uh, Wendell Moore is the most intriguing of the three. I think EJ Liddell um, in terms of like immediate impact might be the biggest X factor. Okay. Well, I mean, just going off of those guys, I'm going to tell you right now, I know Lindell more than the other two, Mm -hmm. uh, but just listen to what you were saying. Number one, about the kid from Arizona. Um, One thing I like about Arizona's program, they always got pretty much, they put out good players. And so I think that's what I like about that kind of mix. And you said he's six, seven with Um, a six, 10 wingspan. That's real nice. You know, that's a good, and he's a defensive player. Mm -hmm. Um, And you like that kind of versatility, especially with those long arms, man, you can do a lot of things with that, especially you can cover. uh, One one thing I like about Giannis, he's not just big. He's so daggone long when you're long Mm -hmm. and big, it's a big difference, especially when you're playing defense. Um, And especially if you want to play attacking defense, you want those type of long type players. So I love that. I know he's got some athleticism to him, I'm sure. Um, so I, that would be an intriguing pick, but I guess flowing with you, um, EJ, uh, is it what Lindell? I, I don't want to make L- sure Liddell. Myself. Liddell. Yeah. Now I watched him. I, I'm not going to sit there and say I watched him all the time, but I did get to watch Ohio State basketball here. Obviously, I live out here, so I do because uh, I got to see uh, Braham mm. um, because he. I actually got to see him when he was in Columbus because he's from Columbus. So he came out to a few tournaments already. So when he went over to Ohio State, I was like, okay, because he was nice when I saw him in high school. But what you're just saying, I think he had a standing vertical. Uh, uh, what was his standing? I think one of the things what they were talking about was uh, with EJ was his athleticism. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people were surprised because it was it's sneaky. And just yeah. like you said, he can shoot. You got a lot of things that you can do with him. He can play a lot of things for you defensively. He can shoot for you. He's versatile. You know, he's six seven, but he's got 240. So yeah. he's a strong guy. And yeah. he can play the position defensively for you, multiple positions. So where you coming with the Draymond S, but like you said, that corner three um, was really set up good at Ohio State. That's going to be the calling card for him, though. And that's the real good thing is when you can have that size at 240, be athletic, can shoot and defend. Mm -hmm. Now you become real valuable. And like you said, that's a real possibility with Dallas. I would like to be very intrigued if they looked at that. Um, How tall is the kid from um, Duke? Six, six. The guard. Oh, he's six, six. Six, And he shot like 41 percent from three point range. Mm hmm. And he's not really a shot maker, right? He's not really a shot creator. He's more like uh, that. He can score at all three levels, but he's not, mm-hmm. like I said, he's not spectacular in any one area. He's he's mm-hmm. balanced. He's efficient from anywhere he, he scores, but he's got a little bit of playmaking to him. It's just, he's not a, like I said, he's not sensational in any one area, but he's solid and across the board. And I think, honestly, for what you need, that's a very solid thing. Like, I've seen him put the ball in the deck and pull like a Dirk Flamingo shot. Like mm-hmm. the guy's got some moves. It's just, he's not like a primary scoring weapon. Got you. And like you said, he can definitely be in a tree because he definitely could fall in that range, right? Where the Mavericks could be, you say? Yeah, I think uh, of these three names, I think he's the best option. Like in terms of full impact, I think he's the best one of these three if he falls to you to make okay. an immediate impact. I, I think long-term he could have the, the biggest impact, but I think Liddell's, to me, a very intriguing second runner up to that. All right. So you name these three guys. So is there any like, you know, I, I'm still on the big man. Is there any versatile like a 6'10 guy can that could possibly maybe because this is my question, because once again, mm-hmm. 
DDP, you more on. I'm still coming in the fold with this. But as far as the draft picks, you got the the first pick. That's what the 26 pick. Yep. Okay, and there's no second rounders. I don't think. I honestly don't think we have a second rounder this year. Like I said, I've I, I'm up to speed on a lot of the stuff with the mm-hmm. draft, but like mm-hmm. I'm not as in depth with it as any. I right, honestly right. hadn't looked much. I, I looked at like five or six prospects the last couple of days. Mm-hmm. Uh, and obviously I, I went through his video and everything and kind of saw that and was like, all right, here's some other names for me to check out. But uh, I have not looked at that. I don't think they have a second rounder though. Okay. So this is where it's gotta be. Um, you know, do you think if they picking at this pick, is it going to be a developmental type pick when you name these three players? Would you, out of these three players you named, right? Mm-hmm. Who would be the go to guy that you would want and say, I would rather this guy, if you got to draft either one of these guys? I think Wendell Moore, if he, if you got him, I don't think he's having, I like, he might come off the bench, but he's mm-hmm. not going to be like a Josh Green where like his rookie year barely plays and then sophomore year, it's like, and he'll get some touches here and there, some burn, but for the most part, it's like very inconsistent. I, mm-hmm. I think if, even if he's on your bench, I think he's a solid rotation player year one. Uh, Liddell, I think is in your rotation, but I, I think more is the most ready to go, like ready to go option for you to plug in here. If you're talking about like, Hey, if we're only thinking about like next year or maybe this two year window coming up, what do you look at and who makes the bigger impact? I think Moore has the better chance there, but honestly for what Dallas's weaknesses are, there's a case to be made for Liddell. I just think Moore is the better player. Got you. Got you. Well, that's going to be interesting to see. Cause like I said, um, you know, the good thing about, you know, he shot what 50% from the floor, 80% from the free throw line mm-hmm. in his junior year. And you know, you're not going to get a lot of points scoring, uh, but still 13 points a game with all that talent they had around them. And Duke, yep. there's going to get be a lot of players from Duke drafted this year. Um, so to be uh, scoring like that at that clip with the talent around you, that to me bodes well uh, going into the NBA. And like you said, um, he might be a rotational player coming off the bench, but he'll be an active guy. He won't be a guy that'll just be sitting on the bench and won't be getting any tick. This right. is a guy that this is a kid that can actually be in the rotation and you'll need that kind of shooting. And I, I get kind of excited when you see that size and you're shooting like that from the field mm-hmm. and a uh, free throw percentage is high like that. Yeah. I like to see the and he's versatile. Um, so yeah, I like, I, I, I like, I'm feeling you on that DDP and I'm going to check some tape on him. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, you mentioned earlier, like some of the some bigs, like I know the front court's obviously a problematic area for Dallas, but honestly, like and any had some of them in his list, but he had them all in that tier four range where he's kind of like, all right, the players got something like it's not like it's a wasted pick, but it's like the kid from Auburn, for instance, he's like, he's he's all right, but like. I, I'm not going to be excited about that pick. I'm going to have to trust that you know what you're doing if that's mm-hmm. your pick. And sometimes mm-hmm. those do work out. Sometimes a team takes a guy, you see it a lot in the NFL in particular, where uh, like Travis Frederick for the Cowboys, where everyone's kind of like, ooh, did you reach for, for that center? What are you doing? Like, And then when was he ever not great for Dallas? You know, like that's just kind of sometimes it works that way. But I, I think in this case, the the bigs that are there, even if they're there around 26, it's kind of like, I don't know if you're significant enough in comparison to where we can get some of these other guys in terms of helping us in the big picture. I think Liddell works kind of as a hybrid uh, for that purpose. And so if you were to look more of a front court player, a forward uh, slash small ball five, I think he would be the most intriguing one. But again, for total impact, my more, my money is on more. I'm feeling you. I'm just looking at some highlights while you were speaking. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yep, I'm I'm with DDP on that. I mean, obviously, you have to watch a little bit more tape, uh, but just seeing a little bit of what he does, um, I think he averaged like four assists, and he has a lot of alley-oops to the big man, yep. and we like that. You know, Luca likes that, but he can get to the cup, got some sleepy little game, can got a little post work, but I like his little jump shot, um, and, and he looks like he creates, and he got some athleticism, took him mm-hmm. to the hole, and will kind of yam on you, so – I, I like it. I, I feel in you, DDP. Great, um, great, great stuff. And you know what thing I like about it is 
Duke always bringing players, dog. You feel me? Duke Duke have players for for ages now, and the talent that they continue to bring in is ridiculous. I mean, you look at their fives; they're to going all the way to their ten. They're dogs. So, yeah. um, to like you said, to get that many points a game with all that talent on the team, I like it. And I'm watching them. I'm excited if Dallas would to uh, be able to get him. For sure. And shout out again to any on, uh, on that video, like on the yeah, Liddell shout out, shout out for like the, knowledge. the Liddell thing where he, he had the comparison Draymond esque. Like that was like, as soon as he said that, and I, I went and looked at the tape, I was like, yeah, I see exactly what he's talking about. Like mm-hmm. that makes sense. Like that's a, that's an apt thing that actually kind of gets me a little bit more intrigued by the prospect overall. Cause like, once you see that, you're like, Oh, okay. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of undeniable, like what kind of impact you can get like that when you have a versatile guy that can guard multiple positions has a high basketball IQ. And, you know, like I said, Draymond used to be able to shoot a little bit, not so much anymore, but even still his impact is undeniable. So it's like, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm intrigued, but for sure, it'll be interesting to see what they do.